but I still there's certain things I uh, I, I completely still hold true. I did I did anti PC material years ago, and everyone thought I was a conspiracy theorist. I was going, no, no, no. This is like a this is like intellectual colonialism, man. They're going to start. They can, they can bend this into thought crime. They can bend this into 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 so that you you know they break down all functions of society, turn all society into this kind of subjective postmodernist sort of soup where no one's allowed to say anything because someone gets offended which leads into this and it's happening and i told them 10 years ago and like did comedy about it and no i didn't and, and so he goes steve's a bit nuts i'm going well you're all watching it now aren't you because all you're watching these 20 year old sjw's who have you know come of age the the, the harvest from the children of the damned as i call them they've, they've all come through school governed by political correctness pumped full of ritalin and now they're all running around with green hair and Doc Martens and neck tattoos thinking they're non-conformist while they're wasting their youth trying to be activists for groups that they've never even met. Who they didn't ask to be the spokespeople for these apparent minorities who are oppressed by, well everyone's a minority of these people except white straight men. Because they live under a colonialist, patriarchal, Christian, paedophile, system that has just oppressed everyone in the world and so white cisgendered males as they now call us should all just shut up while everybody else who's a minority gets gets brought up into this form of equality based around collectivism and no one ever being offended again and i'm like well excuse me you people are insane this isn't going to work what are you talking about what are you your 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 utopia of some kind of a global equality is it's an illusion. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's, it's not possible. What are you talking about? Political correctness is such a trick. Because who? Because really you can't argue with its points. Because in one sense, I've, I've just grew up a metalhead and then a comedian. So I've never really had a, a specific political side. I'm not left, I'm not right. But through my just, the way I've thought most of my life, which is the way usually a, a lot of my creative friends and creative people do, You've just we've just grown up without thinking about having a political attached to a specific political group. We've basically been lefties. I've never been racist. I don't care if you're gay. I don't care if you're a bloke and you want to wear a dress. I don't care if two blokes want to get married. Yeah, we've travelled. Uh, we've yeah. travelled. You know, yeah. I've been to 38 countries. You've probably been to more. So you sit there going, watching some 20 year old on the YouTube talking to you like. And this is how you're supposed to behave, everybody. <laughs> how old are you? <laughs> oh, look at this joke now. When I was young and I knew girls with green hair and Doc Martens and tattoos, they were at metal or punk gigs and they were cool. Now when I see a young girl with green hair and Doc Martens, I'm like, get that fucking thing away from me. <laughs> right? Don't look at it. It'll scream rape. Don't look at it. Don't touch it. Don't go near it. It'll call you some kind of ism or a phobe. <laughs> and and yeah, yeah, right. And it'll stand on its moral high ground, thinking that it can direct everybody to this illusionary utopia where no one ever gets offended again. Because that seems to be what they want, isn't it? The, the, where, where, where no one ever gets offended. There's no discrimination. Everyone gets fair chances. Everyone has enough to eat. Everyone has this. Now, of course, their ideas. That who, how can you argue against that? Who really wouldn't want that unless you're a psychopath? It'd be a wonderful world to think that everyone had enough to eat, you could always get the kind of job that you wanted, that you weren't looked upon, you weren't discriminated against, people didn't attack you, people didn't do this. It was, basically, they're asking for a world without pain. Can we have a world without pain? No. No, you can't, right? So, so you, you, it's an illusion that you're going to create this. So you, there's going to be some pain in your life. And guess what? The strongest and coolest and some of the most deepest spiritual thinkers in all of our history have told you how pain can make you better can make you a better person. When we grew up, it was like the kids that got picked on at school, of course it can be dangerous if kids get bullied at school because people have different genetics, people have different experiences at home, they have different psychologies and how they interpret the things that go on that happen to them. So of course you can get some kids that go a bit nuts or perhaps at the worst scenario kill themselves. But that's not going to be fixed by you then giving every kid in school a trophy because he played soccer. Yeah, they do that now. You know, you get a trophy to compete. You don't get it because you win, you get it because you had a go. But that doesn't do anything. What's that do? That cuts down any kind of entrepreneurial spirit, any kind of... Well, well. of course there's some kids that are better at sport in school. I couldn't play sport. I ran. I've got six foot long legs. I look like a giraffe on ice and everybody yeah. laughed. Then there's also the level of self-responsibility. It's The whole world has not conspired against Steve Hughes to make him have his issues. 
So I've got my issues, so now I have to fucking deal with them. There's a level of self-responsibility that you have to take. How do you... It's, see, when people go, I'm offended, I've never been offended in my life. I don't know what they're talking about. I can be disgusted. I can be, you know, I can see... If you see four men standing around kicking a dog, you're like, that's wrong. It's wrong, but I'm not offended. Like, I'm not... It's, it's, it's a different thing. Someone could come up to me and go, you're a big, gay, skinny, no ass bastard. I might feel bad, but it's it, but it's what's happening in me. So that's, that's there's a part of me that feels bad because if I didn't care that I was a long, skinny, no ass bastard, and they said that, then it wouldn't affect me. So if it does affect me, then there's something happening in me, and the thing that's happening in me is my responsibility. And if I can deal with that pain that's happening in me, that's making me feel upset or humiliated about this, then perhaps I can become like like a god. You can you can you can. Because you, you've, you've, everyone's got their shit to deal with. Now, of course, some people are getting a worse ride than others on the planet. But you can't run it around just, just going, well, to, to, what's our first move for this utopia? Well, no one's to get offended ever again. So it's not even a tactic. It's because it's an impossible... It's not going to happen. <laughs> okay, right. It seems to me... I just go outside sometimes during the day and go to the shops and stuff and I just see men and women and kids and that doing some shopping and there's some Indian people and some black fellas and some whites and some Chinese guys and everyone's just going to the bank or doing some shopping and that. But for some reason these people go outside and see Nazis and bigots and... <laughs> <laughs> Right. I'm, I'm, where are you going? <laughs> I just went to the shops and bought some almonds off the chick at the organic store. I called her darling. She didn't say anything. She didn't spaz out. <laughs> so they, yeah, they 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 freak. They they offend themselves. You know, they offend themselves. But I think we're seeing a harvest now because I haven't been to school like you for probably thirty years. So when we grew up they, 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 in Australia, they, they hit you with a cane. You get a bamboo stick, and you, you muck up, then they just hit you across the hand six times, or across your back of your leg six times, and then, and if you were the fat kid that couldn't kick a ball, then everybody laughed at you, and if you were a skinny kid like me that couldn't kick a ball, then they laughed at you, and you, and, and you dealt with that shit. But now, we don't know if these kids have been at school with this PC stuff coming in, and they're, and they're teaching five-year-olds about homosexual rights and transgender rights and that, and plus going, oh, you're, you're a bit mental, so have some, have some Ritalin. We know your brain doesn't stop developing till you're 24, but you're six. I think it's time for some hardcore psychiatric <laughs> drugs, don't you? You know. <laughs> so yeah. So I'll gladly be called a conspiracy theorist. I don't care because lots of the things conspiracy theorists talk about are happening in front of your very eyes, and if you can't see it, then then like what? Like what? The whole meltdown of your of your society through through something like this, through political correctness. PC people, I mean, conspiracy people have been talking about this for ages. Talking about it for ages. Don't you see what they're doing? They're deconstructing. You, you, the West seems to be deconstructing itself, right? It seems to me that social justice warriors, as they're called, warriors, funny, when we grew up, warriors, especially back in the hundreds or a couple of hundred years ago, a warrior was someone who, uh, who, who had to get sort of reached a certain age of 16 or 18 at manhood and then got hung up by his nipples from hooks for three days and wasn't allowed to eat and then got sent into the desert for 40 nights to just eat scorpions and then when he came back if he wasn't dead he was he was like a man and now you're a warrior because you've got green hair and you're sitting behind a keyboard getting offended and everything right I'm, I'm thinking oh well, let's hope the next people that come to attack our society uh, we've lucky we've got our warriors here to defend us right, <laughs> right. you're warriors Jesus Christ so it seems to me what's happening to them, these social justice warriors, while well, they seem to hate capitalism, they're all anti-capitalist, don't they? They're all, they yeah. hate capitalism, right? Now, obviously, is capitalism, oh, ironically, of course, if they hate capitalism while they'll gladly reap the rewards of its oppression as they sit there on their iPhones in yeah. Starbucks waiting to get their cheap flight to the anti-capitalist march. You, you know, <laughs> okay, so you hate capitalism. Now, could... Is capitalism a system that is exploitative, has, you know, created pain and misery and and, and stolen things off, off, off certain cultures? And that? Yes. Yes, it is. Right? Why? Because it's a system made by human beings. 
And sometimes when systems are made by human beings, arseholes get in charge of it and run amok and fuck things around for their own ends, right? Like all systems that people have ever run. Has there ever been this utopian Garden of Eden they talk about on the earth in the yeah. all of history? No. So, so what are you going to replace this capitalism with? Well, they run around with their Che Guevara shirts and their hammer and sickles thinking, we'll just whack a bit of communism in there. That should sort it out, right? Oh, okay. Well, just, should we go and dig up the hundred million dead bodies in Russia and China and ask them how that all panned out? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? I mean, I'm sure equality looks tops on paper. <laughs> Look, everyone gets the same as everybody else. And who's going to dish this out? You're still going to have to have a hierarchy to dish it out. You're going to trust them to do it? Well, okay, whatever. And it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't pan out this equal distribution of wealth because someone's got to be in charge of it. And people, yeah. when people get in charge of things, they get into positions of power. And and it's quite difficult to run a whole country. You have to end up being a bit of an asshole to do it. So of course, there's shit things about capitalism, right? But at the moment, that's what you've got. Oh, well, shouldn't we fight against it? Well, perhaps you should, but your tactics aren't going to work. And they hate religion as long as it's Christianity. Because they can't talk about Jews, because they don't know what they think anyway, and they're off limits. And then they've got to support the Muslims, because Muslims in their multicultural countries, which are so racist, even though they're the only multicultural countries on earth, well, they're, they're in the minority bracket. All 1.8 billion of them. And because most Muslims aren't white, they must be oppressed. This is how they seem to think. So, in fact, everyone's oppressed except white heterosexual men who are part of the patriarchy, which are part of Western expansionism, and run the corporations. So we've got to destroy all this. Right? What they're going to replace it with, I don't know, they're Shea Guevara shirts. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so he seems to be their thing. So what they're like doing now is, to me, they're like a cancer. They hate themselves. Because a lot of the people running around freaking out about it, taking on the moral high ground and becoming the voices of the oppressed. No one asked, I can't remember the oppressed coming up and asking them to speak on their behalf, but apparently they've taken this role. So now, so now what they're really doing is that they hate themselves. They hate their own culture. Because they are capitalist white people in a colonialist country. But they want that destroyed. So, so what they want to do is they want to kill the host. They're like a cancer. The irony of cancer is that it kills the very thing that keeps it alive, which is you. So that's what they're like. They are. They're like a cancer. I support Milo Yiannopoulos when he walked on stage and just went, here's my speech, feminism is cancer, thank you, and walked off. And he's right. He's right in a literal sense. Well, I've been a lefty all my life, and now I'm starting to listen to right-wing conservatives and realising I'm on their side. Completely. Because, because I, I can't stand these PC people, because they're out of control. Well, I'm not I'm any kind of right-wing, you know, racist, <laughs> lunatic, everyone, you know, black people shouldn't have kids kind of lunatic. But, but in this, this sphere of argument about political correctness, free speech, yes, I've turned it because they're, they're making more sense now. You lefties are out of control. You're absolutely out of control. You make no sense. You're not even rational because you think you've got the moral high ground. Because you think you're trying to create this illusionary utopia for everybody. So anybody that disagrees with you, you just call a racist, a bigot, a sexist, a homophobe, a misogynist, uh, yeah, a Nazi. Oh, Nazi. Oh, they're so popular now. They're just everywhere. Nazis. In fact, I, I, I wrote up my own one day, my own pyramid of, of, the, of the sort of uh, arsenal of accusations they have. I think it goes, it goes Nazi. That's the king. Then you have racist, fascist. Then you get sexist misogynist, ableist, then you get xenophobe, transphobe, Islamophobe, xenophobe, or whatever it is, uh, no, what's it, uh, homophobe, and then you get your bigots, your fat shamers, your Christians, your conspiracy theorists, and hate speech. And underneath there is just the rest of the mainstream ignorant mass, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Who need to conform to the moral high ground of the left, right? And then, of course, then my other joke was, and then that's your pyramid. And once you once you hit Nazi status, you really can't go beyond Nazi status. That's the that's the all that's the king of the. But you know, this is a complex thing. I'm just a one bloke on the earth that likes heavy metal and does comedy, so I don't have the answers. I wasn't in the secret New World or the War Room, but I've done a lot. I've done 20 years of, of, of research down different avenues, and I just sit there and go, well, it's it's happening. I wrote a joke the other day. There's a feminist in Australia called Clementine Ford, who's brutal, right? Who's brutal. 
who are just out there and she can say whatever she wants and she does this and she does that. She's totally there. Fuck men and fuck this and fuck men. And you can see it everywhere. Fuck men. It's a happening. Feminists are everywhere. Men haven't done anything for us. What have men ever fucking done? I don't know. Built the world. <laughs> you know? So, well, this Clementine Ford, right? So I wrote on Facebook. I wrote a name. Capital C, little L, then wrote M-E-N, because her, obviously her name has the word men in it. Right, put that in capitals, time forward, and wrote, God, she must hate that. <laughs> right? She's a full-on feminist activist, hardcore. She's a public figure. And she's a public figure, so she's she's open to ridicule, like I am, if I want to go up there. You, as soon as you put anything out into, the, into a public forum, you're open to ridicule. If you record an album and put it out, you can't say you can't review it. It's out there now. It's, there's a part of it that's not yours anymore. It's in the public domain. Yeah. So if you want to stand around and preach and carry on, then you're open to ridicule. That's the way it goes. Not everybody likes my comedy, and if they went and they were reviewing it, they'd tell me. I can't ring them up and go, you can't say that. No, they don't like it, right? So I just wrote this joke, right? It's not even a real good joke. It's just a crap pun. That was three days ago. It hasn't stopped. It's just a, seven letters, seven words, a, a, just a crap pun joke. And see, and see, I, I watch them and I see what happens. And I do that because I want to draw them out. And I want to draw them out because you can't argue with these people. You can't argue with these people because they're kind of operating in this kind of, and I didn't work this out myself, smarter men than me have taught me. It seems to be this kind of post-modernist, subjective, neo-progressive Marxist idea where there's no objective truth. And so everything's just got to be sort of a subjective, whatever you, how, whatever you think is how it should be. And that should be respected. This is what, like transgenderism. Oh, we've got 30, 40 different genders, have we now? So you want to be, you're a, you're a demi-gender, bi, cross, binary, non-gender, fluid, half man, half woman, and, and that you need to respect that. Well, no, I don't, because most people aren't. So, so what do you want us to do? Instead of just going, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to flight 159, we'll be taking off. You want us to go, ladies and gentlemen, and non-genders, and non-binaries, and gender fluids, and homosexuals, and hermaphrodites, and transvestites, and gender fluid men who sometimes think they're women. So you open it up to everybody, it's, it's, that's why it's never ending. You just go on into infinitum, that you can, you can never satisfy these people. And also, you never satisfy them because they're not defending anything. The right are defending something because the, the right are like traditionalists. That's what a conservative is, and in my simplistic understanding of the way these two dynamics would work. I'm not an intellectual and I don't understand the complexities of politics, but it seems to me that you, you, your conservatives, they like traditions, don't they? Borders, traditions, things that hold the, struct, the, the society into a kind of framework of how it operates, the things that it keeps on the fringe so that the, 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 the way it operates doesn't it operates for the for, for the for the majority in the best way it can see, right? So so if you want to be a, in the West, if you want to be a Satanist, you can, but really we're not going to let you come in and just have the same amount of airtime on TV as everybody else, right? Because we don't, it doesn't really work for our society. But once you create this kind of everything needs to be respected, everything, and respected. Why should it be respected? You have to earn respect. I don't just respect you, right? I respect the drummer in Rush. Why? Because he's amazing. He wrote all the lyrics. He rode his bike across Africa, wrote a book about it. His wife and daughter passed away in one year. He wrote a book about that, went on the road, dealt with that. He's a quiet, humble guy who, who the last thing ever crossed his mind would, for, would he demand my respect. He gets it because of his body of work. And the, and, the, and the man that I think that he is from his, from his work and the, the interviews I've seen. So, yeah, I respect that guy. Right? But you can't just walk up to me and go, respect me. Well, I don't even know you. Well, I'm a cross, non-binary unicorn. And that's how I define myself. Yeah, but see... <sighs> and now, the people who can't deal with this, because it makes no sense, because it's not operating any kind of framework, we're also wasting our energy continually talking about it with each other, going, what's wrong with these people? So then I go, well, there's got to be an agenda going on. Why? Because it seems to be happening in most Western countries. So why is it happening in most Western countries? Surely someone set it up. Because what, did everyone just agree? From Finland to the Netherlands to Australia to New Zealand to Canada to the United States to Spain 
to, to, to Romania, to Poland, to Hungary, to Norway, to Sweden, to because it's happening all around these countries. What, they all just agreed. It's like no smoking around all the Western world now. Why? Did they all just agree? Yeah, but how? Most people can't even agree what film to go and see. How did all these nations on different parts of the world just happen to get, yeah, that's a good idea. The Damn government doesn't give a fuck about whether you drop dead. They're selling you the cigarettes. Drug dealers don't care if you die, if you sell them heroin. See, banning no smoking is a great way. Of course, it seems all the non-smokers are happy and the people that perhaps want to give up cigarettes are happy. And, and you have this because it's, a, yeah, okay, we've done reports. It, it kills you, right? But that's a great way to take away a, a, a small freedom initially that seems like a noble idea. See, the, what, the, what the West had, which other countries didn't have, or, or at least what the West had, right? I don't know what other countries had, I haven't been to them all. But in the West, didn't we at some point make the idea that the state can't tell you how to live your life? So if you want to smoke yourself to death, then that's your right. You've handed your responsibility back to the state. Which didn't the West fight for hundreds of years to not have that happen? So that if you want to eat yourself to death with pork fat and chips, and smoke cigarettes and drink whiskey and you die at 43, right. that's your right. If you want to be a dumb, fat, die at 42 guy, you can. But these people are wrecking our, our society. They're wrecking it. They, they don't want fun anymore. Fun is fun. Jokes are jokes. You can take the piss. It's like the other day when I read the thing about Clementine Ford, some girls going, I used to like you in your comedy. I even met you once, which was a, a, a great thing for me. And now you didn't make jokes about this and about about uh, different genders and stuff. Why do, you, why do you all attack these soft targets? Who's next? Aboriginals or LGBTQ people or, or women? Or that you just attack women? Why, why, why are women soft targets? I thought you said you were strong, independent women. Isn't that your promotion of feminism? You're strong and independent women. There's no difference between men and women. The biological determinism is a myth. But I thought you were strong and independent. But we draw the line of puns and comedy and we're soft targets. I thought you said you weren't soft. I thought you said there was men and women are the same.